In this question, we're gonna push on the idea of ratio division of an interval and have a look at this secondary idea, which is called external division of, a, of an interval uh, or a line segment as they're calling it here. Now, this is famously confusing. So I'm actually gonna go straight to part B here. I'm gonna skip over part A. If you wanna have a look at how to divide, uh, divide a line segment internally, just have a look at the previous example. Uh, but I'm just gonna focus on this one because number one, um, it's quite different geometrically and number two, it opens up a bunch of other questions uh, that you need to think through in a fairly logical way. But thankfully, they're consistent with what we've already established. So uh, let's see if we can understand what's going on here. Before we get to um, the particular position vectors that we have, uh, let's think about what could it mean to divide a line segment externally? Well, if I were to provide for you some point A, and some point B, then to divide that line segment internally, don't know why I did that so thick, let's try that again. To divide it internally, the whole point is that uh, some point, let's just call it P for point, some point P is gonna be internal to this particular interval, this line segment. So uh, if we were dividing, well not if we were dividing, in part one it says divide it in the ratio one to two, then I would divide this into, as we've seen before, three equal segments, and then P, would be here to give me this ratio of one to two. So that's what internal uh, ratio division looks like. Nothing too dramatic. We understand that P will be between A and B. It'll be on the inside of A and B, and that's where the internally uh, word comes from, okay? Now, therefore, I hope it sort of the logic carries for you that if that's what internal division of a line segment is, then external division is on the same line. So what we can do is we can imagine this going off in um, you know, opposite directions for infinity. But that point P is not going to be on the inside of A and B, it's going to be on the outside. So what I'm actually looking for, let's get rid of this particular one that I drew before. I don't need this divider either. What I'm looking for is some point out here or out here. Uh, maybe I'll highlight those. In fact, I can just get rid of this, uh, this one there. Um, this is where I want my point P to be. I need to find the place somewhere along uh, either of these two. We would call them rays, I guess, because they start somewhere. A and B, and then they go off in infinity um, to infinity. We want to find the place along either of those rays where P could be that will still have this same uh, ratio, one to two, but it's, it's different, it's going in different directions, okay? Now, um, some of you will have encountered a ratio division formula within coordinate geometry in earlier years. You might have been extended into that. And um, some of you will have learned that there's kind of a shortcut way, which I'm gonna deal with at the end of this question to be able to get to the answer. Um, I'll get to the shortcut uh, in a minute, but I actually want to make sure you understand why the shortcut works. So what would this actually look like? Well, I want you to call back. If you were doing, actually we'll just use this example here. If you were doing internal line division, right? We're dividing this interval AB, AB internally in the ratio one to two. Now what this means is, um, you can see because I'm, I'm paying close attention to the order, A is first, B is second, one is first, two is second, the question I want to pose to you is, which of the points, A and B, which point will my new point P be closer to? And if you remember from last example, we can say, well, since uh, the ratio one out of the one to two is smaller, I'm going to be closer to the first point than the second, that is closer to A than B. Right? If I were in the ratio two to one, then I'd be closer to the one, that's the B side rather than A. Now, thankfully, mercifully, the same kind of logic applies when we're talking about external divisions. So when I'm trying to divide this line segment AB externally in the ratio one to two, again, I look at the order, A comes first, B comes second, the one comes first, the two comes second, I'm gonna be closer to A than I am to B. So when you have a think about which one of these rays I'm going to be on, which one of these rays is closer to A than to B? And the answer is, well, it's this left-hand one. It's the one coming out of A. If you picked any point over here along the ray from B, you would always be closer to B than to A. So you're not gonna get the ratio one to two. Um, you would get a different one. So we'll get to that different one later on. But for now, what you need to know is, I'm looking for that point P that I'm gonna position right about there such that you get this ratio one to two when instead of going, say, uh, like this, instead of going one, 
and then here comes two, one to two, I now have to go outside of this interval a, B. So instead of going in the same direction, I'm actually gonna have to go first in the opposite direction from A to P, that will be my one. And then I'm gonna go from P over to B, that will be my two. So this is the one to two ratio that I'm after now. And having found that, we can now work out where um, P will be on the basis of um, geometry. And now I just need to crunch the numbers of this particular A and this particular B. All right, so now that you've got a handle on what external division means, let's go ahead and try and find this answer. This is part B that we went straight to. In order to find where this is, hopefully you can see that um, in order to get from A to P, it's backwards to going from A to B. So in fact, I just need to find this AP vector um, is just the opposite of the AB vector. Um, same magnitude, opposite direction. So in order to find out what AP is, First, I need to find out what AB is. So let's go ahead and do that. AB is equal to OB take away OA, and I've explained the geometry and the, um, uh, the relationship between the sides of a triangle to get to that pair of vectors. Uh, what is OB, or what are OB and OA? I'm going to get, I'm gonna put this all into one step. I'm going to get 5, 5, and negative 8 uh, from OB, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract all of these. So that gives me minus 2, plus 1, plus 2. You're noting that I've flipped around the signs of the negative 1, the negative 2, because I'm subtracting. Uh, what's that going to give us? Well, it looks to me like I'm getting 3, and then 6, and then negative 6 to me. Just double check those signs. Looks good. So that's AB. So therefore, I can say AP will be the opposite of that. So I guess that would be negative 3, negative 6, and then positive 6. And because what I'm looking for is the coordinates of P, the way to get to P directly is from some origin to A first, and then go over to P. Um, in other words, I'm just going to put it here. What this implies is that uh, OP starts from O, goes to A first, and then goes from A over to P, because I know what each of those vectors is. I've got OA up the top there, 2, negative 1, negative 2, and then I'm going to add this, oh, yeah, that'll, no, that'll do, um, add negative 6, and then I'm going to add 6. So what do I get here? Um, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, uh, minus 1 minus 6 is negative 7, and then I'm going to get a positive 4 down the end. That's OP, which means therefore that P has the coordinates negative 1, negative 7, and then 4. Okay, so that's how to do the external division of uh, a line segment. It is a bit weird because you've got to think about this whole going outside business rather than going inside the interval. Uh, but uh, this leads to that shortcut, by the way. Um, if you can actually use a ratio division formula if you've learned one. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan, as you guys know, of learning formulas without knowing why they work. But if you have a think about what is happening geometrically here, another way that you can do this is just to say, well, this is the same as doing negative one because I'm going backwards as it were, and then positive two. So if you learn a ratio division formula, and some textbooks will provide it for you, you can just simply say it's the same as doing a regular internal division, but just making the ratio one of the numbers negative. In this case, negative one makes the most sense because that's going backwards and then um, forwards in the original direction. So that'll give it to you, but I also think it is really important to know why it is that that works. Now, lastly, I, I do want to talk about, um, it's not addressed in one of these questions here, but I want to give an example of what it looks like to divide this line segment um, externally still, but where the ratio is opposite. So suppose, let's just call this part C, if I can write that. If we divide AB uh, externally, that needs to be said, and instead of going, as was asked here, one to two, what if we went two to one? Right? Two to one would mean when I again pair up this particular interval, A, B, in that order with the ratio A and B, you can clearly see which of those two points you're gonna be closer to. Um, the one is smaller, so therefore you're gonna be closer to B than to A. So if I go back to my diagram up here, let's just grab this whole thing and I'll delete off the parts I don't need. So here is my 
AB situation, and I'm wondering where will P be the, in this case? Um, I need to be closer to B than I was to A, so I'm going to be on this ray rather than the other one. The two to one comes from starting from A and going all the way over in the big jump first, and we'll call that P. That's going to be the two, and then the one comes in the opposite direction, like so. I should put that one underneath just to be a little clearer, right? So in this case, once you find AB, you're still going to need to do that. What is the most sensible way to get to P? Well, because P is over here, it's closer to B, um, it would stand to reason that the easiest way to get OP would be to start at uh, B, get from the origin to B, and then go from B to P. However, in this particular one, um, because the ratio is 2 to 1, that means that, if I just grab this color here, um, hopefully you can see that uh, B, P, if I were to go from here to here, it's the same direction and the same magnitude as going from A to be. It's just a different displacement vector. It's starting, the tail is starting at a different spot, starting at B instead of starting at A. So therefore, if this is A, B, then it stands to reason that this is also A, B, same direction and same magnitude. So therefore, um, to find out where P is, you just go O, B, and then you'd add A, B, because these two vectors here are going to be identical to each other. So, hope that makes sense. If there's one tip uh, I can give you for all of these questions, even though I sound like a broken record, please draw yourself a really clear diagram because you can see how much of my argument was based on what was happening visually. And in fact, all the arithmetic and stuff like that that happens afterwards is, it's the easy part. Um, it's quite mechanical. You don't have to think very much for it. Um, and in fact, most people will get this part wrong, not because they don't know how to do vector arithmetic, but because um, they choose the wrong directions to go in or they position P in the wrong spot rather than over here, or they choose the wrong, um, you know, scalar multiple of a, um, in, uh, of, a, of a vector to multiply by because they don't know um, how far they need to go, whether it's one third or two thirds or where you go double, that kind of thing. So do yourself a favor, draw a big diagram and you shouldn't find these two questions, these questions too difficult.